Hi friends, today I will teach you one important topic from general pathology that is amyloidosis. It's a very important topic as far as the exam point of view. I will cover all the aspects of amyloidosis starting from definition, pathogenesis, clinical feature and the morphology. But before I start this video, I recommend you to see this video in the high quality. You can make the change in the YouTube setting for the higher quality and see the video in the highest quality so that your quality of the video will not get hampered. So let's start the discussion on amyloidosis. So first of all, the any topic starts from definition. What is amyloidosis? Do you have any idea? You might remember that the protein can get accumulated within the cell. But here what happened? The protein deposition is extracellular. So the definition include extracellular fibrillar glycoprotein deposition right extracellular fibrillar gly glycoprotein deposition in the tissue that is known as amyloidosis now because of this accumulation the tissue will get damaged and so the function of the particular tissue it getting compromised so that is the complete definition of amyloidosis now we will discuss regarding the physical property of the amyloid how it looks like so first you can see it in the electron microscopically in the electron microscopy it is seen as a non branching fibrillar structure it's a fibrillar glycoprotein so you can able to see the non branching fibril the diameter of this fibril is 7.4 to 10 nanometer that is also one of the question the diameter is 7.5 to 10 nanometer now if you see this amyloid in the x-ray crystallography or infrared spectroscopically then it will show the beta plated seed configuration remember that it's having the beta plated seed configuration and because of this configuration Amyloid looks an apple green by refringence when you inspect it in polarized microscopically. We will discuss it later on. So, you might have questioned that what is crystallography? So, it's a, ba it's a basic tool used for determining the atomic and molecular structure of a crystal. What is the principle of that crystallography? Here the crystalline atoms cause a beam of X-rays to diffract it into many specific directions. So that is the principle of crystallography. And what is infrared spectroscopically? The name itself suggests we are using the infrared radiation to study the chemical substance of an chemical substance of a particular component. Here the infrared spectrometer is used so that it can produce infrared spectrum. That is a basic principle of this both method and it will show the beta plated seed configuration that is a physical property. Now what is the basic pathogenesis of amyloidosis? So you have to remember that basically it is a protein misfolding disorder. It is a protein misfolding disorder. Normally what is uh, what is there in our body? The protein should be folded properly to work in the body now if these proteins are misfolded then it is repaired by the chaperon in our body normally it is repaired by chaperon if such repair mechanism is failed then our body will remove such protein by the one organelle that is proteosome it will remove the such misfolded protein intracellularly and extracellularly such misfolded protein will be removed by macrophage clear intracellularly it will be removed by proteasome and extracellularly such misfolded protein will be removed by macrophage through the phagocytosis this mechanism is totally fail in amyloidosis so what will happen the misfolded protein will get accumulated that is the basic pathogenesis of amyloidosis so this misfolded protein can be normal protein or it can be mutated protein. Normal protein can be produced excessively or the normal protein can get mutated. That is the mechanism. 
it is a protein and it it's misfolded protein that you have to remember it is not folded properly that is amyloidosis and it will be deposited extracellularly traditionally we can divide the amyloidosis into the AL and AA type that is a primary and secondary so let's start the discussion on the pathogenesis of capital AL deposition that is the amyloid light chain deposition in the primary amyloidosis now what happened in this disorder uh, you might remember that some condition can lead to plasma cell excessive plasma cell like that of uh, multiple myeloma and with the plasma cells are increased sometimes you might have some monoclonal b cell proliferation so such disorders can activate the plasma cell excessively so there will be production of immunoglobulin light chain the excessive immunoglobulin light chain will be produced from plasma cell you know that plasma cell having the function of immunoglobulin production so the light chain will produce now this excessive light chain will not be damaged will not be cleared by the body there will be defective proteolysis as we have discussed so what happened this excessive L protein can get accumulated in the tissue and that is known as primary amyloidosis and the deposition is of AL protein AL amyloid clear so that is the primary amyloidosis now we'll discuss regarding the secondary amyloidosis so the pathogenesis of secondary amyloidosis start from the chronic inflammation it is due to chronic inflammation particularly common one is a rheumatoid arthritis so what happened in chronic inflammation like dysentery uh, sle rheumatoid arthritis in such condition macrophage gets activated this activated macrophage will produce interleukin 1 and 6 it will produce 1 interleukin 1 and interleukin 6 now this this interleukin 1 and 6 1 and 6 that is inflammatory mediator will activate the liver cells liver hepatocytes to synthesize one acute phase reactant and the inflammation this acute phase reactant is increased that's it that is SAA protein serum amyloid associated protein this increased SAA protein will not be cleared by body. body. There will be no proteolysis, so it will get deposited in the tissue. So that is the mechanism. It starts due to the chronic inflammation. Macrophage gets activated. They will produce interleukin 1 and 6. And that will stimulate the liver to produce the SAA protein excessively. Serum amyloid associated protein. That is the acute phase reactant. It will produce excessively and it will not removed by bo body there will be no proteolysis so it will get deposited in the tissue that is the pathogenesis of secondary reactive amyloidosis now the another one is ATTR deposition sometimes the transthyretin might get mutated and so it will get aggregated in the body and it's get deposited so that is the transthyretin deposition okay and now basic now the amyloidosis can be classified into the six group i have made it simplified it can be systemic or it can be localized now in the systemic it can be primary or it can be secondary right what is what do you mean by systemic systemic means multiple organs are involved it will involve multiple organs while localized means it involves only a single organ. So that is the basic classification. Now, it can be primary systemic or secondary systemic. Another one, it can be localized. Or it can be hemodialysis associated systemic amyloidosis. The another variety is herald of familial amyloidosis that runs in the family. And finally, senile systemic amyloidosis. That is with the that is seen with the advanced age because of increased age so this is the basic six group of classification of amyloidosis now first let's start with primary systemic amyloidosis i have already described the mechanism that is it is due to 
ए एल अमाइलोइड डिपोजिशन कैपिटल ए एल वेर ए स्टैंड फॉर अमाइलोइड एंड एल स्टैंड फॉर लाइट चेन इन द मल्टीपल माइलोमा एक्सेसिव लाइट चेन्स आर प्रोड्यूस पर्टिकुलरली एसोसिएटेड इज द लैमड़ा चेन टाइप द लैमड़ा लाइट चेन विल बी इंक्रीज्ड ऑब्वियसली इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद प्लाज्मा सेल डिसऑर्डर लाइक मल्टीपल माइलोमा विच आर द ऑर्गन दैट आर इन्वॉल्व इन प्राइमरी सिस्टेमिक अमाइलेडोसिस इन द ए एल वेराइटी सो इन द प्राइमरी सिस्टेमिक अमाइलेडोसिस इन द मल्टीपल माइलोमा इंड्यूस द ऑर्गन्स यूजली इन्वॉल्व आर योर हार्ट your GIT, then it can involve peripheral nose, it can involve respiratory tract, it can involve skin, and finally it can involve the tongue as well. So there are the organ involved in primary systemic amyloidosis. Now secondary reactive amyloidosis. As we have discussed in the secondary amyloidosis, the amyloid type is amyloid associated deposition a a type that is due to serum amyloid associated protein now which are the associated chronic inflammatory disease in the secondary amyloidosis it's a reactive amyloidosis due to chronic inflammation so which are the disorder associated the associated disorder is rheumatoid arthritis that is the most common one another one is sle then it can be due to scleroderma it can be due to chronic infection like chronic osteomyelitis dysentery like infection it can be due to hodgkin's lymphoma and the renal cell carcinoma the mechanism is already described that how a get deposited which are the organ that is involved in secondary amyloidosis here the organ are somewhat different usually it involve kidney the commonly involved organ is kidney it can involve the spleen as well the spleen also can be involved it can involve the liver it can involve the lymph nodes or it can involve the adrenal glands or thyroid these are the organs involved in secondary reactive systemic amyloidosis so these are the organ clear the autonomic nervous system involved in primary amyloidosis the liver is involved in secondary amyloidosis you are right the kidney is involved in secondary amyloidosis heart can be involved in heart can be involved in it's involved in primary amyloidosis then spleen it can involve in secondary amyloidosis and the git that is involved in primary amyloidosis now what about this brain and pancreas it is involved localized means it affects singly so it will comes under localized amyloidosis now we will discuss the third entity that is the hemodialysis associated systemic amyloidosis so what is the basic mechanism now what happen uh, chronic renal failure patient needs and dialysis to remove the waste product like that of blood urea nitrogen and creatine so the 70 to 80% patient of this chronic hemodialysis develop this type of amyloidosis how that we will discuss usually this waste product are getting filtered by membrane but this dialysis membrane this dialysis membrane cannot filter one important substance that is the component of mhc class 1 molecule that is the a beta 2 microglobulin beta 2 microglobulin cannot be filtered so it will get accumulated extracellularly and lead to amyloidosis that is called as hemodialysis associated systemic amyloidosis now where such deposition occurs usually the deposition involve the three particular organs joint synovium and the tendon sheath remember that it's a mcq joint synovium and tendon sheath ligament also can be involved it can also involve ligament but remember that it will not involve bone that is also one the one of the mcq so hemodialysis associated amyloidosis now we will discuss heredo familial amyloidosis that runs in family familial amyloidosis there are three spectrum of this heredo familial amyloidosis the first is family mediterranean fever another one is familial amyloid polyneuropathy and familial renal amyloidosis now what happen in this mediterranean fever uh, in this fever there will be mutation in the pyrin protein so 
there will be overproduction of interleukin 1 and you already know that interleukin 1 is responsible for fever in our body so there will be recurrent febrile attack that is called as familial mediterranean fever the amyloid that is getting deposited are the aa type capital aa secondary type now familial amyloid polyneuropathy uh, now we have to remember that in such condition there will be mutation in the trans transthyretine protein the ttr is getting mutated so this mutant form of ttr getting accumulated in the nose and it will lead to polyneuropathy that's why name given as an familial amyloid polyneuropathy sometimes alpha fibrinogen can get deposited in the renal that will lead to familial renal amyloidosis so that is all regarding the herit of familial amyloidosis now we will see the fifth important variety that is the localized amyloidosis so the spectrum start from first one that is the cerebral amyloidosis it is seen in alzheimer disease what happened in this condition in this the type of amyloid deposited is the a beta and there will be formation of plaque over the brain surface or the brain surface uh, there will be formation of plaque that is a cerebral amyloidosis now the second entity is medullary thyroid carcinoma you might have remembered that thyroid is having para follicular c cell it can have para follicular c cells that is having the function of production of calcitonin it will produce is excessive calcitonin so in the medullary thyroid carcinoma there will be excessive production of calcitonin from the para follicular c cell and it will get accumulated that is known as amyloid calcitonin deposition a cell deposition third entity is involvement of islet cells of langerhans of the pancreas langerhans cells of the pancreas it usually seen in the type 2 diabetes mellitus and insulinoma in such condition insulin is getting increase in the type 2 diabetes type 2 diabetes mellitus there is a resistance to the insulin action so the insulin is increase and so there will be amyloid deposition so the amyloid get deposited it is called as aia double p fourth entity in the localized amyloidosis is the deposition of the atrial natriuretic factor that is the a n f factor usually it involves the atrium of the heart that's why the name given isolated atrial amyloidosis if there is a deposition of the chelsolin then it is called as ocular amyloidosis a gel deposition another variety is the prion disease in which the prion protein gets deposition deposited that is also the example of localized amyloidosis now last sixth category is the senile systemic amyloidosis what happened in this condition in this condition just remember in the polyneuropathy familial polyneuropathy there is a mutant form of ttr here the deposition is the normal transthyretine deposition so that is called as senile systemic amyloidosis so that is all regarding the classification now i will move further and now we will discuss regarding the morphology of amyloidosis so guys you have to remember that whenever morphology is asked in the pathology you have to write down in a two way one is the gross finding and another one is the microscopic finding these two points has to be mentioned in the morphology so first let's start with the gross because of amyloid deposition the organ will be enlarged in size there will be increase in the size of an organ the consistency consistency will be firm appearance is waxy and gray colored now if you have if you have seen such accumulation over the cell then you can apply certain chemical 
like that of iodine or sulfuric acid the iodine will impart the blue color sorry yellow color and the sulfuric acid will give the blue violet colors now according to the organ involved in the amyloidosis we have seen that there are different organ involved in primary and the another or and different type of organs involved in secondary as well so according to the type of amyloidosis different organs show the gross changes like that of increase in size waxy appearance form consistency etc however you have to remember that it is not the rule it can involve vice versa so that is gross finding microscopically what you will see okay you are right the deposition is extracellular the deposition is extracellular right the extracellular deposition is there now in the ordinary light microscopy in the hematoxylin and eosin stain it will looks an pink colored pink colored homogeneous eosinophilic deposit and it is the a granular it is the a granular if it is granular then it can be necrotic material so in that way it is look in ordinary light microscopy now you have to remember that such pink colored substance can be because of fibrin can be because of collagen tissue or it can be due to hyaline deposition so it is never the diagnostic you have to use the special stain for diagnosis of amyloidosis and that special stain is congo red it will give the amyloid to the pink or red colored so the deposit will looks pink or red colored by the congo red stain usually it looks and red colored so that is the specific stain for amyloidosis again this is not the diagnostic you have to watch it in the polarized light microscopy you have to inspect such deposit with the congo red after congo red stain in the polarized light microscopy and it will show the apple green by refringence now you might have question that what is polarized light microscopy so in such polarized light microscopy usually we are putting the polarizer in between the light source and the sample so it is placed between these two and the polarized light falls on the doubly refracting the specimen which generate the two waves so one is ordinary wave and another one is extraordinary wave so it will give you the green colored by refringence double refraction when you are see it in the polarized microscopically and you have to remember that it is due to the beta plated seed conformation right so i will show you just see this is the congo red deposition red colored amyloid deposition all these are congo red stained amyloid while here we have inspected it in a polarized light microscopically and in the polarized light you can see it as a by refringence so that is regarding the amyloid under the light microscopy and the polarized microscopically so if anyone ask you that how will you confirm the diagnosis then you have to write in that way that it should be stained by congo red and it should be examined in the polarized light microscopically which which will show the apple green by refringence that is the diagnostic clear now if you stain the amyloid with the thioflavin t and s then it will give yellow colored stain under the uv light if you stain with methyl violet and crystal violet then the color will be rose pink colored you can also perform the immunohistochemistry to differentiate between the amyloid light chain associated protein and the ttr protein in immunohistochemistry antigen antibody reaction principle is used which is labeled with chromosome so you can do the ihc study as well i have taken this figure from the robins book which is very good book for study the pathology now kidney amyloidosis we will see the amyloidosis according to particular organs so the first organ we will discuss is kidney amyloidosis 
it is the most commonly affected organ remember guys it is the most commonly affected organ and it is one of the most severely affected organ as well in amyloidosis grossly you know that the organ is enlarged in size form waxy appearance and gray colored but you have to remember that in late stage because of tissue damage the size of kidney can get reduced now this is one of the most important mcq for kidney uh, that is asked in exam that where the amyloid deposition start in the kidney so you have to remember that it will start in the glomerulus it will start in the glomerulus and particularly in the mesangial matrix it will start in the mesangial matrix and gradually it can involve the glomerular basement membrane so the glomerular basement membrane will become thick so that is one of the important question that where deposition start so it starts in mesangial matrix gradually such amyloid deposition can involve the tubules and it can deposit and it can appear within the lumen of the tubules that is known as amyloid cast deposition so now what will happen this accumulated amyloid can damage your podocytes in the kidney the kidney is having podocytes right and it will having the a negative charge so it will repel the albumin it will not allow the protein to pass in the urine but what happen in this condition the podocytes are damaged kidney damage is there so what will happen the protein will get excreted in the urine right the protein will get excreted in the urine so there will be protein urea and albumin urea particularly albumin is excreted so because of excretion of protein in urine particularly greater than 3 gram per day it will lead to decrease protein level in the serum in the serum the protein level will decrease so there will be hypoalbuminemia and because of hypoalbuminemia your oncotic pressure will be decrease and so it will lead to edema fit over the face face and foot edema will be seen that is because of decrease oncotic pressure it is called as nephrotic syndrome in which there is also presence of hyperlipidemia in the blood so the amyloidosis can lead to development of secondary nephrotic syndrome this is the microscopic image again this image i have taken from the robins this is the amyloid deposition extra cellular in the mesangium right this is the mesangial amyloid deposition and here you can see the amyloid cast within the tubules so that is regarding the microscopic image of kidney amyloid and overall kidney amyloidosis now we will discuss the spleen clear grossly the organ will enlarge and the waxy appearance will be there and it's a gray color consistency is formed now what happen in spleen amyloidosis the amyloid can get deposited in the spleen follicles you might have remember that spleen is having the two structure two important structure one is follicles and another one is red bulb so if the amyloid get deposited in the spleen follicle then it will give the appearance granular tapioca like the appearance is granular and it looks like an tapioca right so that is called as sago spleen it is given by the name sago spleen see tapioca like granular appearance you can see the granular appearance tapioca like that is called as sago spleen but sometime what happen this deposition is in the red pulp and it is the diffuse if the deposition is in the red pulp of spleen then it will give appearance like that of large sheet and it looks like an pig meat so it is given the name lardaceous spleen right it is given the name lardaceous spleen the see here the deposition is sheet like very large it is called as lardaceous spleen i have taken this figure from the hars mohan book of pathology that is also another good book for pathology for understanding the pathology now we will talk regarding the liver amyloidosis 
okay so just uh, summarize in the kidney deposition start in the mesangium right in the spleen it can be in the follicular or red bulb now where amyloid deposition start in the liver so in the liver it gets started in the space of dj what is it see this is the hepatocyte of the liver right and this is the sinusoids there is blood vessel modify so the space between this hepatocyte and the sinusoid is known as space of dj so this is the space of dj right so the amyloid deposition start first in this space then it can involve the hepatic parenchyma and the sinusoids now one surprising fact is that liver function is usually preserved in the liver amyloidosis it will not cause much harm this is the microscopic image with the congo red right this is the amyloidosis in the liver and now we'll talk regarding the cardiac amyloidosis so the cardiac amyloidosis the amyloid deposition is in the sub endocardial area of the atrium so here the deposition start in the sub endocardial region of the atrium and gradually it can separate the myocardial fibers by the amyloid deposition so this is regarding the cardiac amyloidosis now tongue tongue also can be involved so the tongue can be enlarged and it can cause difficulty in speaking okay so you might be clear that uh, for the diagnosis of the amyloid for the diagnosis of amyloidosis you need to inspect it in the microscopically you have to stain it with congo red you have to see it in the light microscopy and then in the polarized microscopically so you might have question that from where will you get uh, take this biopsy to inspect it histopathologically so the best site for biopsy is the abdominal fat aspirate then you can take the rectal biopsy or gingival biopsy this is usually the preferred site gingival and abdominal fat because it is convenient for the patient then biopsy can be taken from according to the organ involvement if the results are not conclusive in this three biopsy or you need to take biopsy from organ then it can be taken so these are the sites now clinical feature you can remember the clinical feature according to the organ involvement first of all kidney you remember that because of uh, because of nephrotic syndrome there will be loss of protein so oncotic pressure will decrease and so there will be edema so there will be swelling in the feet face and leg so because of kidney involvement there will be swelling because of heart involvement there can be palpitation and arrhythmia the increase uh, heart rate right so that can be the presentation what happened to git in the gastrointestinal tract the villus can get damage the villi can get damage so there will be malabsorption syndrome there will be male absorption syndrome and the nutrients will not get will not get absorbed so if your iron will not get absorbed then you can have anemia if your vitamin d is not absorbed then you can have low vitamin d level so the such male absorption can be developed in the tongue what will happen the size is increase so there will be difficulty in speaking now you might you might know that uh, our nose controlling the blood pressures right and the gastric motions as well so if your nose is getting damaged then you can have hypotension and diarrhea because of peripheral nerve involvement you can have the tingling like sensation because of neuropathy tingling can be seen and if the cns is involved then then can be dementia in the alzheimer disease the patient will have memory loss now one important fact is that this amyloid can inactivate the factor number 10 by binding it so there can be bleeding problem as well so these all are the clinical features of the amyloidosis and now here are the some golden points that has to be remember for exam point of view the amyloid is associated with the chromosome number 21 the most common cause of death in amyloidosis is cardiac failure approximately 40% case die due to the cardiac failure right so the common cause of death is cardiac failure the most common affected organ in the amyloidosis is kidney the most severely affected organ is also kidney 
and you have to remember that in the kidney renal venules are not involved while in other organs it is involved but here it is not involved uh, most common chronic inflammation that lead to secondary amyloidosis is rheumatoid arthritis that is also important point so clear the common cause of death is cardiac failure the common organ involved is kidney and the common chronic inflammation that lead to reactive systemic amyloidosis is rheumatoid arthritis now the common sites for beta microglobulin deposition that is seen in dialysis associated amyloidosis so in the hemodialysis associated amyloidosis beta microglobulin can get deposited in the carpal ligaments and so because of its thickening median nerve can be compressed right and it is known as carpal tunnel syndrome so carpal tunnel syndrome can be seen in hemodialysis associated amyloidosis that is because of a beta 2 microglobulin again important mcq okay so this is all regarding the amyloidosis right starting from the etiology pathogenesis and the morphology Again, I am summarizing the amyloidosis uh, just for you. And then we will see the MCQs, right? So, uh, let's start it. So, amyloidosis means extracellular fibrillar glycoprotein deposition. That is amyloidosis. So, the tissue can get damaged and it can compromise its function. What is the physical property? It is in electron microscopy, it is seen as a non-branching fibril. And in the X-ray crystallography and infrared spectroscopy, it can have beta platelet seed configuration. The pathogenesis is basically protein misfolding disorder. Right? It will not get repaired by chaperon or such misfolded protein will not get removed by proteasome or macrosome, macrophage. And so the amyloidosis will develop. The misfolded protein get accumulated. AL type of amyloidosis, primary amyloidosis. The pathogenesis include monoclonal B cell proliferation or multiple myeloma in which the plasma cells getting activated. So excessive light chain, immunoglobulin light chain will be produced and there will be defective proteolysis. So it will get accumulated light chain. In the secondary amyloidosis, there will be amyloid associated protein deposition that is produced from liver cells and the stimulus for such production is chronic inflammation in which macrophage gets activated and interleukin 1 and 6 will be produced. There are six groups. Primary systemic amyloidosis, secondary systemic amyloidosis, hemodialysis associated, heredofamilial, localized and the sunai. In the primary systemic amyloidosis, it is due to multiple myeloma and the amyloid light chain is getting accumulated particularly in type. type. Organs involved heart, GID, peripheral nerve, respiratory, skin, and tongue. In the secondary amyloidosis, the deposition is capital AA type. The associated chronic inflammation is rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, scleroderma, chronic infection, Hodgkin lymphoma, and the renal cell carcinoma. Pathogenesis is already described. The organ involved are kidney, spleen, liver, lymph node, adrenal, and thyroid. These are the organs. In the hemodialysis associated amyloidosis, A beta 2 microglobulin will get accumulated because it is not filtered through the dialysis membrane. Herido familial involve familial Mediterranean fever, familial amyloid polyneuropathy and the familial renal amyloidosis, right? In the localized, it can involve the cerebral amyloidosis that is because of A beta deposition. In the medullary thyroid carcinoma, there will be calcitonin deposition. In the diabetes and insulin insulinoma, because of excessive insulin, it can get accumulated. So it involves islet cells of Langerhans. Fourth one is excessive atrial natriuretic peptide can get accumulated in the atrium called as an isolated atrial amyloidosis. Ocular amyloidosis involves gelsolin deposition. And in the prion disease, there will be prion protein deposition. In the senile systemic amyloidosis, the transthyretin that get deposited is the normal one, not mutant, like that in polyneuropathy. A grossly, because of amyloidosis, the color is waxy, gray color and the waxy appearance. Consistency is firm. If you will apply iodine, then it will import the blue, co yellow color. And if you will apply sulfuric acid, then blue-violet color will be developed. 
Microscopically, the deposition is extracellular and with the concord staining, it will appear as a pink red color. It is red color that is specific stain for amyloidosis. But again, it is not the diagnosis. For the diagnosis, you have to inspect it in the polarized light microscopically. You have to use the polarized light uh, that will show the apple green by refringence. And that is because of beta plated seed confirmation. Important MCQ. This is the figure of light microscopy and the polarized light micros polarized microscopy showing amyloid. In the kidney amyloidosis, the amyloids start getting deposited first in the glomeruli. So first it involves messenger matrix and then it will spread to glomerular basement membrane and the tubules and the vessels. But the renal venule will never involve. Patient can develop nephrotic syndrome due to kidney amyloidosis. In the spleen amyloidosis, if the deposit in splenic follicle, then it will appear like tapioca like. And so it will look, uh, so it is given the name Sago spleen. And if the deposit is in the red pulp, then it is large seat like that is called as Lardesius spleen. That is a gross image. In the liver amyloidosis, the deposition starts in the space of TSA. That is the space between the hepatocytes and sinusoids. In the cardiac amyloidosis, it gets started in the subadocardial region. In the tongue, it can lead to increased thickening of the tongue, so macroglossia that will lead to difficulty in speaking. The base site for biopsy is the abdominal fat, abdominal fat aspirate, rectal biopsy, or the gingival biopsy. But these are the clinical features. Hope you will get it. These are the some golden points. The amyloidosis is associated with the chromosome number 21. Most common cause of death is cardiac failure. Most common affected organ is the kidney. And the most common chronic inflammation leads to secondary amyloidosis is rheumatoid arthritis. In the hemodialysis associated amyloidosis, carpal tunnel syndrome can develop. Now let's see the MCQ. First, the major fibril protein in the primary amyloidosis is which one? Your answers are here. AL, AA, A transthyretin or procalcitonin. So your answer will be definitely. In the primary amyloidosis, light chain is getting accumulated. Which is the most common cause of death in amyloidosis? Obviously, the answer is cardiac failure. Based investigation for the diagnosis of amyloidosis, rectal biopsy, ultrasonography, endoscopy or the CT scan. Obviously, for diagnosis of amyloidosis, you need to see it under microscope. So you need to take biopsy. That is the gold standard. So the rectal biopsy is the answer. A 60-year-old female patient that was suffering from renal failure and on dialysis seen 10 years. She developed the carpal tunnel syndrome. So which of the following can be associated? As we have discussed later on, the carpal tunnel syndrome is due to beta to microglobulin accumulation. Amyloidosis is most commonly seen in... This is somewhat tricky. It is related to localized amyloidosis. And that is uh, seen in the pancreas islet cells of Langerhans because of type 2 diabetes. Right? Now this is uh, one interesting MCQ. A 43-year female patient having 3 plus protein in the urine with increased repeat in the blood. The patient is having edema leg, right, swelling over the feet. The before 6 months, uh, she was diagnosed as a recent infection. So kidney biopsy will reveal which type of amyloid deposition. Now see, presence of protein in urine and the hyperlipidemia suggestive of nephrotic syndrome, right. And here... There is a presence of dysentery infection. So the infection can lead to sec secondary amyloid associated protein secretion from the liver. So it will increase. It is the acute phase reactant. It will increase and it can lead to secondary amyloidosis. And that secondary amyloidosis can lead to nephrotic syndrome. So the, deep, so the answer is capital AA, secondary amyloidosis. Which is the base method for amyloid deposition? Remember that only Congo red with light microscopy is not enough. Your answer will be cholera, Congo red, Congo red staining and examination under the polarized light microscopy. So your answer will be Congo red under the polarized light microscopy. Thank you very much. Hope my video will be beneficial to you in making the all fundamentals clear. 
regarding the amyloidosis that is definition pathogenesis morphology clinical features right if you like my video then subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever i am posting the new video related to the related to the pathology right i will cover all the aspects of pathology one by one so hope you will enjoy this video thank you very much